So good afternoon, everyone. Today was indeed a great day to be in the field. I just made it home to present them just on time. So what I will do is to present an update on insect activity. Is uh, you're going to be a little disappointed because there is not much to say about pests. Uh, pest populations are very low for most insects. Today in the field, I was paying attention to pollinators and I didn't really see much activity of honeybees and other pollinators in, in apple that are in full bloom. One example of one insect where you can see higher captures uh, a few days ago is oriental fruit moth. This is using a pheromone trap uh, deployed by uh, John Clements, the smart trap that takes pictures and counts automatically. So the last count uh, was on May uh, 3rd, which is two moths. So you can see the peak happening on April 30th. And this means that the eggs are expected to hatch close to petal fall. And as you know, the, the petal fall spray against plum curculio will, should be taking care of uh, this insect. But now what I would like to do is to present some information concerning uh, European apple sawfly and uh, tarnish plant bog, which is very, very few insects captured. Uh, I'm trying to present an update on number one, the grafting project. I don't want to spend much time on this. It's just, we have uh, 12 different blocks and each block has multiple trees grafted with multiple brand and, and cultivars. But I just go to the, to the numbers. What you're going to see is very, very few tarnished plant box, a lot of zeros. I just going to bring you to the total, which is the sum at the bottom. So basically every week, Pravina, my grad student, she has been visiting each of these orchards. She has been counting uh, insects or, or activity or inspecting almost 290 traps every week. And from this number of traps, you can see that we have zero European apple so, fly so far. Of course, it's just uh, uh, getting to bloom a stage. You have only five plum uh, tarnished plant box in grafted trees, three in non-grafted, three in controlled trees, which are in a different block. So that's very few. I don't want to make any conclusions about grafting, no grafting, and grafted, no grafted, but just very few insects for one month. So this is the sum of all insects in one month, in all these sticky cards, in all these blocks. So what I would like to do next is, I think you know that what one goal of my lab this year, starting last year, it was to see if we can develop or identify a lure for a tarnished plant bog and European apple so fly. So Pravina has been doing experiments um, which are follow up from last year. So what you will see is the plant odor A, B, C, D, and the combination of all of them using sticky cards. All this is happening in cold spring orchard only. So there is very few insects captured in these sticky cards. And one of these A, B, C, or D, one of those is benzaldehyde. I go to the next uh, experiment that she's running. You can see again, almost no insects captured, even though you have an odor that I think is going to be uh, potentially uh, attractive to, to these insects. So one A is a particular odor. Then 4A means it's four times, the, four times the amount. It's four times the increasing odor and uh, uh, dose. Just one insect. The next experiment shows, again, different uh, plant volatiles. Uh, I, I, don't, I am not providing labels and uh, number uh, names to avoid confusion. Very few. There is just one European apple so fly in one trap. There is just two tarnished plant bugs in, in two or three weeks. In the next experiment, we have one more plant volatile that you can buy, it's commercially available, just one insect. So bottom line, confirming what we found in the grafted versus no grafted in, in trees, very few insects. But something I don't want to emphasize that too much, but the chances to find insects, as you can see in this table, the only traps that haven't captured anything are the unbaited traps. So, even though the, the sample size is very low, we have very few insects. Well, every insect that has been captured, it has been captured by a trap baited with an odor. So we will see what happens. I hope there is more insects in the next weeks because otherwise we don't have much data to, to make conclusions. Plum curculio, plum curculio activity is 
very, very low for the time of year. It was a late emergence. The first plant curculio was found uh, just a few days ago. In 10 days, we have found just three plant curculios in three other baited traps. That includes data from today. And one place that we have in Belcher Town starting this year, because I have uh, some potted uh, plant trees. So we decided to bait the pyramid trap with the um, Bensalda phalanferomon next to this pl baited uh, plum tree. So today we found two plum curculios. No big deal. It's just that perhaps this is going to be a more precise way of telling you when things are happening. So current weather, including today, even though it's nice, it's not going to be conducive for high plum curculio uh, uh, immigration into the orchards. I'm not expecting a high activity in the next days. And in previous years, and I remember very well in the year 2000, in just three days, there was a, um, those three days were uh, in bloom. And there was a high activity by plum curculios, so high that in those three days, I remember there was like a 50 or 60% of the total capture in just three days. I have not seen anything like this, like that recently, in, in recent years. So in, when you uh, have this um, cool, rainy uh, activity periods or uh, weather, um, it's going to be very low activity. So what I would like to do now is to switch to an update because now we're going to be engaging in uh, monitoring for the uh, spotted uh, lanternfly. So as you know, this is an invasive species, um, attacks um, many tree species. And those are listed in this slide. So we're looking for Trio Haven as the tree that is going to is going to more, most likely uh, host or harbor this uh, this pest. When it comes to crops, grape is number one. So today I was driving in different orchards in the west side of the state, deploying traps. The eggs spend the winter um, in tree trunks, for example, as you can see in the picture. So this is the time of the year at which we're expecting emergence if, if this pest is in Massachusetts. I think it's in Connecticut. So I will expect that it's going to happen uh, soon, uh, the hatch of this uh, uh, X. And in Pennsylvania, in Southern Pennsylvania, egg hatch takes place in mid to late April. So it takes place early. So I'm hoping we don't find anything, but we're going to spend a lot of time monitoring for this uh, pest so to be able to do this work, we have now funding from two different sources, from the Massachusetts Center for Agriculture and Environment. We received some, some funding to be able to do monitoring this year in 2021. And then I submitted a proposal in, in collaboration with an, a team from UMass. And then we're now working together, multiple departments, to be able to uh, spend more time and er energy monitoring for this pest. So we have now funding for two years, um, maybe a little bit beyond two years. So this is the map just to show you the 20 locations in Massachusetts. The squares, you can see purple squares and orange squares. So the total number of squares is 20. And what happens is that we are dividing the team into different uh, um, routes. So in purple, it's going to be the orchards that I will be visiting with my students. And in orange is, are going to be the routes uh, along the Highway 90, for example, where other people are going to be monitoring. What you see in the circles, either the black or the green circles, those are the reported locations for Tree of Heaven. So we're trying to place the traps on those trees, but if we cannot, if we cannot find Tree of Heaven, we're going to be placing those traps in black walnut or birch or uh, cherry or maple, oak. Those are uh, prefer trees. So we're going to de uh, deploy these traps, which are, you know, some of these um, traps, the circle, circle traps. They are baited with a, an, a commercial lure, which is winter green oil. You can see the lure in the picture. So there is a collecting device, which is a plastic bag. And we are going to start deploying, actually we started today, but it's going to be on the next week. We're going to be inspecting these traps once or twice a week, it depends on weather and if we can make this, these trips. And some of these places are going to be also used for monitoring of the brown marmorated sting bug. So basically that's all what I wanted to tell you. And if you have any questions, I think there is time. Thank you.
Up next, Heather Filbert from University of Rhode Island is going to give us an update on what she's been seeing in the field. Thank you very much, Liz. Uh, we do have, uh, Jaime, about what is the size of an adult spotted lanternfly? It's going to be less than one inch, but it's a pretty big in in insect compared to other ants. It's bigger than cosmic moth. Okay, all set. Um, so wanted to start talking about winter moth because that's what I talk about. And the, the eggs started hatching the end of March and half the eggs were hatched by April 11th. Um, and I think every single winter moth egg, uh, every caterpillar that came of it survived because during that hatch period, the weather was balmy, it was pretty warm and it was not rainy. So they had, they really had, was terrific survival of winter moth which has led to some winter moth problems. Um, I'm seeing high numbers of winter moths in Southern Rhode Island. And then I was out at Westport today at a, in a blueberry patch and a lot of winter moth damage. So this is a, a unsprayed apple tree, but you can see the, the tattered leaves here indicating probably winter moth here is pretty severe looking. Uh, and if you pull apart those leaves, you can find these cute little green caterpillars. They're about halfway grown right now, with though they're still pretty small. They're just about half an inch long or so. Uh, they're about third inch stars. Out in Westport, they were just second inch stars, so even smaller. And then you can see you might have some damaged flowers. You can see the frass here for winter moth and damaged flowers where the, the um, flower parts are, are chewed off. You know, it should look like this. So something like this, there's going to be no fruit there. And uh, if you take a look at your maples, because you're not sure about your apples, you can see this tattered look of a maple leaf that has winter moth damage. And if you pull apart the leaf, you might find a little green caterpillar. Oh, and so in blueberries, as I mentioned, I'm seeing, I'm seeing quite a bit on some blueberry patches. And you can see the frass on the outside of these buds. And then also you might notice the, um, the webbing. So the webbing is the silk given off by the caterpillar. So often you might see this silk in the, in the blueberry patch or in the apples. So a lot of things are in bloom right now, so it's hard to use insecticides, but BT products should still be working very well. The caterpillars are still pretty small and BT products won't hurt the bees. So BT, I just have some, um, you know, there's lots of different products. Uh, Diapel is probably the most a uh, common one, but agree, biobit, all these things are BT insecticides. Something else I saw, this was in uh, an orchard and you can um, see the damage on these leaves. And uh, this is due to um, some cold injury after, after or before, I'm not sure, oil was applied to these buds. So this is pretty typical um, burning caused by cold and oil. Uh, yesterday and the day before was fantastic weather for cedar apple rust. And um, we get some great cedar apple rust galls on red cedars, and this is juniper on the right side. We only need four to six hours of wetting period for once those spores get on leaves. Um, it just takes four to six hours for an infection period to happen. So we had a great infection yesterday. And then um, the four to four to eight year, uh, year Four to eight day old leaves are the most susceptible to cedar apple rust, but and then the fruit is most susceptible between tight cluster through petal fall. And then we get symptoms that can appear on the on the leaves, uh, you know, on the apple leaves or also on the fruit. And it usually takes about 10 to 14 days after an infection. Uh, this leaf is from last year at the end of May uh, or May 26th. And you know, these, these lesions are probably a week or, or more old already. So, and I haven't seen any scab lesions yet this year, which means that those real early um, infection periods that we had, like around tight, um, excuse me, around green tip or so, really didn't turn out to be infection periods or, or not, at least where I was looking, not severe enough, or there wasn't enough inoculum to cause infection periods. It takes about 14 days, depending on temperature, for lesions to appear after an infection period. The, the range for lesions to appear is between like 9 and 17 days, depending on the temperature. So I really think that our first important infection period was a week ago Sunday, April 25th. And then we've had a couple of good ones since then. So 
I think that's all I have to say. Yes. Thank you.